We recently discussed a disequilibrium in a labor market caused by an above equilibrium wage. That uh, wage was a price floor and it generated a surplus in that market. We talked about the fact that that uh, above equilibrium wage could be the government establishing a wage. That's a minimum wage and that's what the M stood for. Or perhaps the workers themselves decide to form a bit of a monopoly to sell their labor power at an agreed upon price that would be above the equilibrium price. In that case, we have something called a union and that's why the subscript U could have been used. But there's another entity here. It's the employers themselves who might be choosing to pay an above equilibrium wage. And in that case, we're using the letter E and that doesn't stand for employers, it stands for efficiency. Now, today's assignment is to write a paragraph explaining why this is called an efficiency wage. But the insight that will make this doable is if you consider the idea of the behavior of the households. Now, if you consider them in the product market where the households are the demanders, you remember we had the idea of consumer surplus. The notion of a consumer surplus, let's take a look at a demand curve for that. You've got a demand curve happening, you know, first quadrant and all that fun stuff. Um, and as you move up in the quantity axis, you move down in the price axis because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. That as consumers are going to consume more of a good, the individual unit, the additional unit, is going to provide less and less additional utility, and therefore their willingness to pay for that additional good has come down. Well, if you take the households and that law of diminishing marginal utility, and you flip the problem over around the circular flow of income to the factor market, now the households are the suppliers of labor. And this thing right here, this upward slope that they have with the wage and the quantity of labor, that upward slope is also generated by the law of diminishing marginal utility. But in this case, we're talking about the diminishing marginal utility of leisure. When they have lots of leisure, they're offering very little labor. When they're offering lots of labor, they have very little leisure. So when they're offering lots of, uh, lots of labor, leisure is very valuable and therefore the wage is high. Well, if you consider an equilibrium wage, that person that's hired there is basically at their willingness to pay. Imagine yourself walking into like a, a falafel stand. Yeah, we'll walk up to a falafel stand. If you walked into the waffle stand, you'd knock it over, the guy would be angry. So you walk up to the waffle stand and in your mind, you're thinking falafel, delicious. I would pay exactly $2.73. Anything above that and I'm walking away. Anything below that, and I'm considering myself happy. And you say, how much is the falafel? And the guy says, 250. And you say, great, then I'm 23% cents better off with this falafel than I am with the money. Yes? So you pay 250 to get something worth 273. And if the guy says, 280, you say, no, because you're seven cents worse off buying the falafel. That's the same idea for work. You think to yourself, hmm, I'd really don't want to work today, which a lot of people think. Um, it would take at least 50 bucks to coax me away from working this jigsaw puzzle or gardening in my yard or shooting rubber bands at the neighbor's cat again. So if an employer offers you $60, you're like, heck yeah, go to work. If they offer you 40, heck no, you stay home. If they offer you 50, you're like, mm, which one? So that marginal worker, that individual that's at that intersection of supply and demand, is really indifferent between getting into that market and getting that thing or offering or not. And we're talking about the households in this case, so the law of diminishing marginal utility is what's actually making this happen. So question for you is, why would we call it an efficiency wage? And what would be the incentive to an employer to pay a wage above an equilibrium and therefore cause a surplus in the labor market? That's an important question. It's sort of similar to a question that Marx raised. Uh, one of the things about capitalism is that unemployment always exists in a capitalist economy. It just does. Um, and these three models, the union model, the minimum wage model, and the efficiency wage model, all explain different reasons why. So that's what you got to work on. Uh, there'll be a document attached to this video. You can write your stuff right in there and hit submit in Teams. Uh, we'll also talk about um, the uh, internal assessment essays and how we're gonna turn those in, but that'll be in another document later on. Have a great day. Gotta press the stop button. Here it goes, stop.